Hey everybody, welcome back to Brick System Brothers. Yesterday we talked about washing the Lego pieces from my job lot, and I wanted to wrap up the discussion about washing pieces with just a few examples of um, some parts that need a little more than the standard rinse and repeat treatment that I've covered on the channel. So these are all pieces from the lot that I've been going through, and um, these are all after the procedure that I showed yesterday with just a simple soak um, and then uh, d definitely more of an individual approach for some parts but still going through handfuls at a time um, I was able to catch a lot of things that needed more work um, and then some of these pieces just looking at um, on top of that what else do the Lego pieces need to be ready for the, my collection so the first thing I want to talk about is plates um, this is an example of a plate that actually cleaned up really nice. Um, you can see it's very reflective. There's very little dirt and dust remaining on here. There is a little bit of a residue stain from where water was evaporating. That will wipe right off. Um, this 2x3 plate, however, did not clean up quite as nice. I think this got um, skipped a little bit in the procedure and definitely more dust and stuff accumulated on here. So just a comparison of um, what it looks like to have a piece that did clean up well versus one that was um, more hastily cleaned and um, definitely if this is going to be at the surface level of a build or a project um, you definitely want to see this rather than this uh, so just an idea of what it would compare to uh, and this one is probably older you know sat under the dust for longer and it's going to take more work anyways but it doesn't hurt to have that kind of approach with that soft toothbrush where you can go in there and get that surface really shiny and reflective um, and just lift off that surface layer that's not really attached it's just kind of sitting on there and all it needs is that rinse so there's a little comparison with the plates for you and that's why I like using the toothbrush is because it gets you to that point with very little effort um, this is a common issue with white parts and uh, some blue parts as well, yellowing, and yellowing is enough of a problem to deserve its own video down the road. I have done the hydrogen peroxide treatment once before, and I had decent results, so I'll talk more about that later on the channel, probably 2021, but quite a few pieces in this lot that were white have been exposed to sunlight for too long and uh, have been degraded. So, you know, the exposure to the UV ultraviolet radiation over time will yellow Lego pieces and in some cases uh, this being one example it gets them almost down to where they're an entirely different color uh, actually closer to tan Lego pieces than white than their original um, so I've had certain pieces that worked well in the hydrogen peroxide soak and certain pieces that didn't really change uh, remains to be seen how this one will clean up but this will go into um, my little bucket. I actually have uh, quite a few white and light gray pieces now that need to go through this treatment again, the wash hydrogen peroxide. Um, and basically what you do is um, this hydrogen peroxide bath. You get that in direct sunlight for a little while and there's a reaction that lifts the layer um, that is stained. It lifts that off the piece and it cleans it right up. Um, and like I said, varying degrees of success. Um, the hydrogen peroxide method is pretty well known, and I have done it before, I just haven't talked about it on the channel. So that's what this one needs, and there's quite a few pieces like that. Um, soap and water isn't really going to help you in this case. Uh, this could use another a rinse. There's still some dirt on here, but that yellow wing actually needs to be removed chemically with hydrogen peroxide. So if you see that on your pieces, that's kind of what you need to do for that. Here is a red composite slope that had a sticker on it. And if I get this in the light correctly, you can see some residue still remains on here. Um, enough scrubbing will get this off, soap and water, uh, but it's actually easier to just use uh, a different chemical, a different treatment. I like to use Goo Gone. Um, I've tried this on many, many Lego pieces, even some with printing, and it leaves the printing alone most of the time. The only time I got a little bit concerned was when I was using this on an old printed road base plate and I was really scrubbing with this to try to get some of that dirt off and it got a little stickier than it should be so I'm thinking it might have started 
um, working away at that original printing. And this was a 30 year old base plate, so it's already getting older by itself. But what I like to do is just take uh, my goo gone here, see if I can get this all in the frame, and get a little Q-tip down inside. You just need a little bit on the end of a Q-tip, especially for this piece. I'm only doing a small surface area here to treat this. So I'll try to get this reflecting the light so you can see what's actually going on. I've got the goo gone on the Q-tip and just gonna rub that a little bit. For sticker residue, it doesn't take much. Just gonna try to lift that off back and forth all the way down this part. If you're wondering why I took the sticker off, it was applied crooked and it had a big air bubble in it. It wasn't worth saving, so I thought it would make a good example for um, the Goo Gone treatment that I like to use. I'll get a little bit around the edges too, just in case I missed anything. So now that you have this uh, piece coated in Goo Gone, maybe for really sticky stuff, you might want to let it sit for a little while, but uh, just for this little bit, it's going to do the trick. Soapy water is what you need to get this off, and I have some soapy water on a paper towel. So I'll just try to get this wiped off pretty good. Um, ideally, I would be washing this under the sink, but I've got a little station set up for recording. So really focus on this area where that residue was. Try to wipe all of this off with the soapy water paper towel now. Let's see if we can tell any difference. There's a little water residue I'm going to have to dry off. So that's the soapy paper towel. Bring in a dry one to just finish the job here. Get this back down all the way dry. And uh, that's about as good as you're going to get with a, a 20 second treatment of Goo Gone. Um, like I said, this will come off with soap and water just scrubbing. It seems to take longer. Um, and that residue actually spreads out rather than just lifting off uh, when you do that soap and water method. So Goo Gone is my go-to solution for that. That's just a name brand. I'm sure there's plenty of other products out there that will do just as good, whatever you like to use. But yeah, that cleaned up really nicely. Hold on, where is it? Right there. Beautiful. So sticky residue, remember, um, can be done with soap and water, can be done old-fashioned scrubbing way, but uh, there's easier ways to do that. Last thing to talk about here are some pieces I've noticed just really um, harsh treatment with the Sharpie. And this is a, an issue that I haven't really encountered in my own collection before. Uh, even in bulk lot buys, I haven't seen a lot of this. I've seen a little bit, but nothing to this degree. Um, we've got pieces just <laughs> entirely coated with black Sharpie, black marker. So I did a little hunting around the internet um, to see if there's any recommended treatments. And I saw a couple different things. The first one that I saw was toothpaste. So there's a toothpaste method where you just work with soap and water and toothpaste and try to rub this. Um, just kind of working that onto the piece and then that can help lift off the Sharpie, I think. Uh, and I tried that on a white piece. I don't think I brought it back. Um, it it did work a little bit, but it didn't, you know, it wasn't a, an instant solution. So uh, I'm not going to do any demonstration for the Sharpie removal. Um, I'm going to keep doing some research and see if there's anything that works really well. And this one isn't too bad. This would This would not take too long, but... Oh, here's the one that I worked on with toothpaste. So as you can see, definitely better than the previous sides look, but no, not all the way gone um, for sure. And then pieces like this, I'd like to try to redeem. It just, for some reason, every other dot has some greenish blue marker on there, every other stud. Um, I think these pieces can be saved. These aren't really too far gone at all. They just have that coating of Sharpie on there. And as far as I know, there are um, chemicals out there that can treat Sharpie without harming the ABS plastic. Just a matter of doing some trial and error to find out uh, what the best way of going about that is. So a lot of pieces here need some help with Sharpie and uh, related stains. Um, so I will keep you posted on what I end up doing for those. And then honorable mention here is this piece of glass. 
seems like it has kind of a brownish stain right in the middle. Not really sure what that is. Um, might be from smoke, cigarette smoke. That is something I encountered in a lot last year um, where it came from a smoker's house. And it was more of a, a smell than anything that was just kind of in the pieces. And a wash does a lot to help that. Um, maybe leaving them out in the open air would be a good thing to do with pieces like that. Uh, and a hydrogen peroxide bath, of course, uh, even better for those uh, specific pieces in that case. So uh, pieces that come from a smoker's house are redeemable. It's plastic. It cleans up pretty easily uh, with a lot of different agents. Just be careful. Um, don't use acetone. That will dissolve plastic. So stay away from... Um, uh, I think some paint thinners have acetone. Nail polish remover has acetone. Don't use that. Um, just do your research. Test... If you have a, a broken piece, test it on a broken piece first and see what it will actually do to the Lego. Um, I'm going to be trying to get these cleaned up and I will look at the results of that in another video down the road. It probably won't be right away. Um, I'd like to focus on the remaining pieces in this job lot. Uh, and then we'll start looking at the sword in the inventory, uh, what I'm gonna call phase three for the job lot. Um, and there's also something coming up related to uh, a begged set that I found buried down among the pieces. It's going to be a really nice kind of cherry on top of this job lot, just in terms of, you know, getting a lot of pieces. They're cleaning up pretty good. Yes, there are negatives like this. Um, and I, I want to say, if you buy bulk Lego, you kind of have to expect this to happen. It's not all going to be perfect. We've already encountered um, the knockoff pieces and the other junk. We've encountered some that is really dirty that you actually can clean up. And now we've encountered these that are Sharpie. It's going to take a lot more effort to actually bring these back to usable condition. I mean, you can build with these. It doesn't hinder their, their clutch at all, but I don't really want this blue piece in the middle of a wall of other clean blue pieces. It would just look out of place. Um, I suppose you could go for some kind of painting effect if you were building an, an art gallery or something, but uh, that's a video for another day. Looking at what you could expect to find in bulk job lots as you buy used Lego. Um, that's kind of the definition, used Lego. It's not going to be perfect. Just uh, know what you might encounter and know how to clean it and you'll be good to go. So we will see you guys later.